Ooh, what's up guys and of course welcome to another video from me the Skyrender and today we're gonna to ba -ba 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 -ba, division final I was gonna say but no the LBA final actually and this is against the Sray Lithio um, a South African player who probably has drafted probably the scariest team on paper actually uh, I'm not gonna deny that fact being both Landris, Victini, Chansey, Raikou, Mega Sableye, Breloon, Cloyster, Curim Fortress and Diggisby. He has not made, made any trades, any trades throughout this. He never needed to. Who can draft Diggersby as his last pick in round 10? How did that Pokemon escape any picks? That is beyond me, to be honest. But the thing here that stands out, and the thing that I'm going to keep myself aware of, is that while his team is um, offensively much scarier than... Um, uh, my previous opponent, D-Train, D-Train had a better synergy against me than this team does. Yes, it's hard hitters, but I have a chance here to exploit it better. Uh, against D-Train, it was much tougher because I was limited to the Pokemon I could use. This time, I'm not that limited, which is good. The bad part is, he still has Pokemon that can win a lot of matchup against me, which is something I need to be aware of going in. And that's generally scary. <laughs> it's actually really scary. Um, Alright, so yeah, before going in, I really need to thank the people that I've not been thanking enough, really. Uh, starting off with Eric, um, Ashton K, the, um, the Delta Division's best player, really, um, by, um, <laughs> by the playoffs, or before playoffs. He won all of his game besides one. And he has been helping me, you know, thinking outside the box, thinking how my opponent probably will play against me and what I should be aware of. Um, and I actually looked at his battle against Saray Lithio this time, because, or Litlio, because he showcases uh, how aggressive one can play to break that team apart. And that's actually the main structure this time. I, I need to play aggressive against this opponent, not because I'll win the matchup, that's hardly a point, but I need to... Um, <laughs> I need to break him apart by actually being a faster, hard hitter than he is. And I I have to do anything in my power to pull that off. Now, I had a few ideas, and it basically came down to that I had to rely on Ellis again for the smarter sets and for the things that I'm missing out. Ellis, who is on Twitter, is a very, very good person in general, very powerful battle, really. And I do rely on him heavily here in the playoffs, and he's been helping against Connor, been helping against... Uh, Mr. Murkrow and the D-Train when it comes to what sets will work against which matchups. And I basically take, we, we discuss a little bit, but mostly he's spot on, uh, which means that there is no way of me debating it. Uh, there are a few sets that I do debate that we end up together actually agreeing on that this would probably work in the long run. So he has this thing figured out. He's much better at seeing all 10 Pokemon than I am. I'm usually locking myself into six Pokemon that he'd probably bring and adjust to them and... Um, Ellis is a much broader aspect, and he can definitely see the balance in teams. And my team is pretty balanced. While it's, it lacks the hazard removal suspect, it still has uh, a better synergy than most teams that have in the draft, and therefore I've been quite successful. Um, so I'm, I'm, I don't pack the stronger pokes, but I do have a, a better synergy. Uh, better synergy in this team, I don't know. We're just about to find that out. And once you see this video, the battle it has to be a do. Uh, so anyway, the things that um, I was so into having Stoutland he powered on, Ellis structured that he powered as a sitting duck this team. Uh, anything is set up against it, it's bad to use it. While Stoutland is very, very good against this team, it still is one of those things that he, my opponent will probably expect Stoutland and Sandrush because it just defeats the whole team really well. It still is one of those things that Breloom can mag punch that, and it takes at least 80% of a hit like that. And am I really that I want to risk that? It probably is not. And of course, make a save by wallet, which means that Scrappy would have been a better aspect of it. And I'll agree. Uh, we even talked about the Scarf variant on Hippowdon, or <laughs> not Hippowdon, on Southland, but realized that his Curin might be Scarfed, and his Digger Speed might be Scarfed, and you know, there are Pokemon that can outspeed it. Raikou can outspeed it too, which is really, really dangerous. And of course, like we said, Breloom has the priority, which makes it a bit more powerful than nerfing Southland, really, especially decided on not bringing Southland whatsoever. Magnuson is kind of good, but not necessary. 
and Shansi. Since that's a chance on his own, we're we're pretty close of locking ourselves in a situation where he can't win. Plus, to make a save like walls Shansi really well. So Shansi is to be avoided completely in my book. So what we came down to is that we need rocks. We need to break any potential sashes. Uh, so Dianchi in for my team, which actually will be used twice, I do believe, is going to be used this time, and it's going to be used because it wins against the Mega Sableye, and um, you can set up stealth rocks without really have to worry about just Mega Sableye, and it can actually, if it brings Fortress, we're going to have Hidden Power Fire, and in best case scenarios, it's going to lead off with Fortress, which means I'm going to lead off with Thunderous, which will pack the taunt, and even if I don't bring the taunt, I could Volt Switch on it, let him set up rocks, let him set myself up rocks, he's going to go for Jarrow Ball, which does 30%, and then I'll kill it with the Hidden Power Fire, which means I get my rocks up, and basically, since I'm using a berry that reduced the Earth or the um, ground hits, I'm actually able to, even with that situation, to survive uh, a Earth Power from Landorus, which means I can retaliate with a Moon Blast and pretty much hurt it really badly. So the team we went up with is, this is... See, well, this is uh, Ellis' complete structure and what he thought would be the best way going at it. Mind you, we have switched a few things, but not a lot. Like I said, Ellis is usually spot on, and uh, there is really nothing I have to do outside of actually just uh, writing down situations where th the different sets would work. So as you can see here, Siglyph with Focus Sash as a f safety safety net this time around too, as it was against the D-Train, basically for, since I can't outspeed the majority of his Pokemon, I, I am better off trying to force him in, trying to kill me, and then kill him. Uh, Siglyph is actually able to outspeed a Curum B if it does not pack the Scarf, which is important to keep in mind. Uh, Psyshock, instead of Psychic, because of Shansi, uh, it's not a favorable matchup, mind you, but it's it's a pretty decent situation to be in. And of course, Ice Beam for Diggersby and Heat Wave for for Etress, if that's if my situation doesn't work out as well as I hope for. Kelio Resolute Form, um, Substitute Call Mine, Secret was called. Uh, enough speed to outspeed Landers, which is really the only thing I can be able to outspeed. Bright cool outspeed no matter what. Uh, substitute is great for setting up against Mega Sableye, Chansey, and Fretress. Uh, they can't really stop it from setting up. Can't hurt it enough to stop it. I guess if it packs a Nightshade on the, the Mega Sableye, then so be it, basically. But outside of that, if I can't pull off a Coal Mine, then I should be able to Oko the majority of his team. Um, the only Pokemon that could win if I break the sub... Uh, against the Raikou, which after one call mine, I am able to take a potential Volt Switch, but only one, which is gonna be annoying, it's gonna have me keeping that in mind, really. Scallopede, Life Orb, Aqua Tail, Megahorn, it covers enough. Uh, it basically comes down to that. It covers the things it needs to cover. And of course, Aqua Tail takes care of Diggersby, it takes care of Landris, and of course, if um, Diggersby is scarfed, I'm still gonna go for one speed boost. Um, and Aqua Tail hit Fortress if he decides to use that very long into the game. If I can't pull off a Sword Stance, then I'm going to be very likely to um, eradicate through this team. Now, I can miss the Mega Horn, but if that doesn't happen, then I'll win if I pull off uh, one Sword Stance. And there's a Sugarberry Dianchi, which we talked about. And for that very reason alone, that it can do the majority of the damage against a lot of Pokemon. Um... I can go before the Chansey, which of course will win uh, by Seismic Tossing, but before going down, I have the chance of, of course, uh, finish that off. Now, Hidden Power Fire, like we said there, it KOs the Fortress, no doubt. There is, I don't really have to worry about that too much. Uh, Asian Power is only for Victini, really. Diamond Stone would be an option, but then I risk of losing speed, which, I, like I said, I want out speed, of course, the... Um, what do you call him? I want out speed Chansey, if he used that. And of course, the, um, I guess the only Pokemon really can, that really can take me out is uh, uh, Curum B if it packs Iron Head, and if so, then you know, so be it. Um, and Garchomp is the last pick. It was between him and Stoutland, but it came down, like I said, there for the Mac Punch. The Mac Punch makes it harder for me to use Garchomp efficiently. And um, this Garchomp is pretty pretty straightforward. It is only here to outspeed Landorus and Curum. Cure him if it isn't Scarf, that is. Uh, Firefang solely for Breloom and Fretress. Now, uh, Breloom actually kind of dies to um, <laughs> Firefang, which means that I don't necessarily need to go for Outrage. Uh, locking myself into Outrage is not necessarily a bad thing, but as long as um, 
Mega Sableye is around, or even before that, is gonna be a situation where I don't want to be in. Uh, Outrage um, is pretty much uh, one of the best moves to have here. If I can go for one sword stance in a situation that's forced me to, of course, get that situation going, then uh, I'll eradicate both his Chansey and Sableye. Chansey is set up fodder for um, Guard Chomp because he'll most likely have the Thunder Wave, which means I'm free to go for um, a sword stance. Now, uh, I can only bring Mega... Um, Mega Guard Chomp against Landorus or QRMB if it isn't Scarfed to make sure I kill them and kill them good um, because I do save the speed until I lose losing 10 base speed after that so QRMB will outspeed naturally thereafter so it's a good way of forcing it out or actually making him sack it both of them because Guard Chomp kill them like there's they can't take that damage which is incredible it really showcases how powerful Mega Guard Chomp is uh, then we got Thunderous, and this is my last pick, of course, and we changed that up a bit. We're not going to have Knockoff. We're going to have Taunt instead to have this a lead. Um, it's basically going to be a speed tie between him and Landorus. Uh, it needs to be. Um, Focus Blast kills, of course, Diggersby. It um, it kills Curum, kinda, if I land a Focus Blast. Focus Blast is not that reliable, but it's the best chance I got against him. Um... And of course, you know, we have a situation where Victini, Raikou, is going to be super, super annoying to deal with, and they're going to win the match against Funders. Um There is really not a whole lot I can do against that outside of really like, just accepting my fate. Now, if he brings Victini, I will assume that he's Scarfed, but I really have to stay in on that. I just, I, I can't play that thing differently. Uh, if he deletes with the Cloyster, if he has that with Focus Sash, then I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to touch speed. I can take an eye shard, no doubt. Um, if it is um, the Shell Smash set or anything like that, or Scarf set, uh, I, I am still outspeeding it, or I'm, I'm still going to do more damage on it. Um, Raikou is going to be one of the tougher Pokemon to deal with, actually. But uh, I'll just have to find my way around that. But Thunder is a great lead, no matter what, and he'll definitely see that one coming. Uh, so Ellis, as always, like I said, he is spot on, and that is the sets we're going for. And basically, like I said, once this battle comes up, um, the battle is to do, and we'll see what happens until then. Um, so I want to thank you for watching, guys, and I hope you wish me good luck, and I'll see you when the battle is over. Until then, take care. Bye.